You get the best of both worlds! Fun fact, kids. That song is actually about transitioning genders. You get the best of both worlds. Hey, it's Lucas. Welcome back to the Chan Chan. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. <sighs> Hannah Montana, the show we all watched in middle school. We looked up to Hannah. We all collectively agreed Billy Ray Cyrus fucking sexy. I watched Hannah Montana, the movie, today. I watched it today, it was on TV. <laughs> Just kidding, I bought it on iTunes. I didn't rent it, I bought it. Yes, I watched the movie and I have a lot of thoughts about it. It's been about a decade. There were things in it that I didn't realize were in it. Like Billy Ray Cyrus's bulge. <laughs> Just kidding, I wish. The Hannah Montana movie is a good old throwback. This was before Miley did Salvia, at least on camera. She probably did it in the privacy of her mansion, but she hadn't had a video leaked of her doing it yet. This was before Miley swung on that hard wrecking ball. Before she humped inanimate objects on stage for all of us to applaud and enjoy. She's an icon, like straight up icon. This is important. I don't think enough people are discussing the nuances of the Hannah Montana feature film. Let's get into it, skanks. Hello, Harvard University. Thank you for inviting me to speak in front of your alumni. Tonight, we're gonna discuss Hannah Montana the movie. I didn't realize when I first watched this movie that the first face they show is Billy Ray Cyrus's. Like whoever directed this knew that if Billy Ray Cyrus's hot mother face isn't in the first five seconds of the movie, bitches are walking out. They knew and they did. I stan a good director who knows how to strategically place hot faces. So the movie's beginning and Miley's running late to her Hannah Montana concert. Drama is brewing. How is she gonna get into the arena? She's Hannah Montana and it's her concert and she's late. Ah! This brings the biggest issue of the whole entire Hannah Montana franchise. The fact that no one in that audience recognizes that she's Hannah Montana. Like they're all paying top dollar ticket money to watch Hannah Montana perform and they don't recognize her in the crowd? Like bitch! If I was at a Britney Spears lip syncing fiasco of a concert and I saw Britney Spears like in a different hair color, like Britney Spears is in line but she has red hair, I'd be like, boo, you're Britney. Let's take a selfie. Why are you in line? Also, we find out Hannah Montana doesn't have a glam squad. No, she has her friend Lily do it. Like what? Boo boo. Get a Kardashian beauty team. You're Hannah mother Montana, like get a glam squad. Why is your 15 year old friend doing your makeup? She doesn't know how to contour properly. Do you think she knows how to apply a highlight in the right manner? No, hire a professional. This brings me to a huge issue with Billy Ray Cyrus because he's like her manager or something. Hannah Montana could easily fit into the budget of glam squad, but Billy Ray Cyrus doesn't let her. Is he pocketing that money? Is Billy Ray Cyrus using the glam squad money on prostitutes? We don't know and I'm concerned. He is straight straight up scamming sister Hannah Montana. And none of us realized it. Also, I didn't realize how raunchy the Hannah Montana performances were in this movie. Montana concerts are lit, bruh. This brings me to another part in the movie where there's a creepy guy in Miley Cyrus's dressing room. Why is he in there? Is Hannah Montana about to get kidnapped and sold as a bride in Thailand? Why doesn't Hannah Montana have a security team? She's a huge pop star. She needs security. Has she heard about Kim K? Does she wanna have a Paris moment? No, Billy Ray Cyrus, that bitch. He not only pocketed her glam squad money, but he's pocketing her security team money as well. Billy Ray has a lot of extra money laying around from all of this scamming, which I'm okay with if he uses it to take me to Mexico. Which brings me to my next point. Disney needs to make a new Hannah Montana movie where Billy Ray Cyrus has like a hot sugar baby, which will be played by me. He'll be my sugar daddy, I'll live with them. And the movie will start and Hannah Montana will be like, yeah, it's like really uncomfortable because my dad has a boyfriend who's like my age. It's 
kind of weird. And I'm like, Hannah, I'm your new stepdad. You have to respect me. Disney Channel, get on it. So then there's part of the movie where Hannah Montana's in high school because not only is she a worldwide pop star, she's just a regular girl. And nobody at her school realizes that she's famous even though she has the exact same face as Hannah Montana. Like what? Why do we all accept this logic as 11 year olds? We had to have watched that in middle school and been like, yeah, this doesn't add up, but we sort of just brushed it off and went along with the story. Sort of how like if you find out your dad isn't your real dad, your mom cheated on your dad and you're not biologically related to your father, you sort of brush it off. That's what we did with this Hannah Montana logic. It's like, okay, maybe no one in the high school just puts two and two together. Maybe they don't listen to Hannah Montana music. But then Lily has a sweet 16 and Miley shows up as Hannah Montana because she doesn't have enough time to change. Even though changing just requires ripping off a wig. Whatever. She doesn't have enough time for that. And everyone freaks the f*** out. Like wouldn't at least one person have been like isn't that the girl from chemistry class just with the Party City wig on? Like whoa. That girl has the exact same face and voice and personality as the girl in my algebra class. Weird, but no one notices. Also, Lily is so mad that Miley showed up as Hannah Montana to her birthday party, when in reality, she should be thanking her like, hello, you have a worldwide pop star at your sweet 16. You're looking like a real ungrateful hoe. When Hannah Montana arrives to the party, Lily's like, you will never, ever, ever Make it up to me. I love how that happens and just like nobody notices. Not one person at the party is like, whoa, why did you just tell Hannah Montana that she'll never be able to make it up to you? Wait, do you know Hannah Montana? Is that Miley Stewart from Algebra Class? Whatever, it's a fictional movie. I'm reading too much into it. Maybe this movie wasn't made for 25 year olds. <laughs> Maybe that's it. So then the movie goes into the main thing, which is Hannah Montana has to go back to Tennessee. Go back to her roots because she's turning into a diva. Why is she turning into a diva? Because she got into a cat fight with the host of America's Next Top Model. I was rooting for you! So Billy Ray Cyrus is like, that's enough! We're going back to Tennessee! You are a diva bitch! Even though I don't let you have a glam squad or a security team, because I pocket that money for me and my sugar baby, which is me. I love how in these Disney movies, when there's a huge scandal, it's just something so not cool enough to be a huge scandal. You know what I mean? Like, sure, getting in a fight with Tyra Banks. That's a little scandalous, but like it isn't enough to make Hannah Montana have her intervention. Like in order for you to make Hannah Montana put her thriving career to a halt, like she should at least be addicted to something, even if it's just Red Bull. Like she's addicted to Red Bull. She needs to go to rehab in Nashville. Like a secret pregnancy maybe. Hot Cheetos. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? So Billy Ray Cyrus uses the Hannah Montana credit card and flies her on a private jet to Tennessee. Like, is that necessary? You are spending Hannah's money left and right. I'm very worried about her financial situation. So you're saying I can never be Hannah again? Billy Ray, you better let her be Hannah Montana again. Do you want to keep flying on private jets? Do you want to continue to have that nice ass house by the beach? Do you want to be able to afford trips to the Bahamas with your sugar baby that's played by me? Then she better be able to be Hannah Montana. Then there's a part where Miley's wig gets snatched by a horse and then her hair shakes down in just the most glamorous shampoo commercial hair porno like when I watched that I was just imagining what it actually would have looked like in reality if you took off a wig you'd been wearing for days your hair would just be matted greasy just stringy clumped together nasty dandruff everywhere. That should have been what that scene looked like. And she was just like, ew, I need to take a shower. This is disgusting. Then we meet the hot guy in the movie, this random cowboy who pops out of nowhere. Apparently him and Miley are friends from childhood. Me and you went up to your Uncle Earl's farm and swam and got poison oak all over her. I remember you, okay? Bitch, what? Yeah, everyone has that childhood memory of getting poison ivy on their dick. Like, what is he implying? 
So Miley's back in Tennessee. She's in the middle of nowhere in some farm town. Her whole family seems to be really into just like singing songs together, getting out a guitar, everyone's just jamming, which sounds cute, like in theory. But I just know like, if at Thanksgiving this year, my mom just got out an acoustic guitar and was like, you guys, let's sing some tunes together. We would all leave. Maybe that's just my family. We don't feel comfortable singing around each other in a serious manner. We're okay with rapping. Something then happens in this movie that just proves we're living in a sick simulation. Does this look familiar to you? I came in like a wrecking ball. Like what? We live in a simulation and this is proof. Whoever's controlling all of this is up. Something dark happens in the Hannah Montana movie that we never discuss. Miley attempts to kill someone. So there's a creepy gossip columnist following her around because he wants the tea on Hannah Montana. He doesn't know about the leaked Salvia video yet. So he's following Miley around trying to get the insider scoop. She notices him. So she spikes his food with laxatives to make him shit himself. <laughs> trips him with hundreds of balls, which makes him fall down a mountain and drown in a lake? Hannah Montana is a killer. Oh, no, oh, oh. They need to do a 10 part documentary series making a murderer style on Hannah Montana. Cause if you try to get the tea on her life, she kills you. I'm scared. Bitch is violent. We all know the iconic song, The Climb, came from Hannah Montana the movie. But did you know she plagiarized the lyrics? Life's a climb. But the view is great. Yeah, Miley heard the hot guy say that and just straight up stole it and made it into a hit song. We stan. Her dad's a scammer and she's a scammer too. Plagiarize him. Taylor Swift is randomly in the movie with zero explanation. She's randomly performing at a farm party. I guess she just frequents a lot of honky tonk conventions. I was okay with her just being in that part. Don't try to upstage Queen Miley. You might be under the impression that Lil Pump and Lil Xan rule the teenage rap community, but Miley Ray Stewart did teen rap first. I'm gonna add a little hip hop to this hoedown. The good old hoedown throwdown. <laughs> didn't learn that dance routine in the darkness of my basement so no one in my family would know. The whole farm town wants Miley to invite her friend Hannah Montana to the town to perform a charity concert, to raise money, to save their town from this rich white guy. I don't really know. He wants to turn the town into a city and they're like, no, we want to keep our town shitty. So they're like, Miley, why don't you invite your friend Hannah Montana who looks exactly like you just with a different hair color. This wouldn't work in 2018 because everyone wears wigs. Kylie Jenner has a different wig on depending on the time of the day. It wouldn't work today because everyone is wig obsessed. Your dad wears a wig. He might claim he doesn't, but your dad has a wig on. He's lying to you. So Hannah Montana comes to the hick town. She's like, how am I gonna do this? Because I'm Miley and Hannah. How am I gonna be both for these people? Luckily for her, everyone in this town is dumb as f and they don't realize that she's the same person. Then there's like a weirdly emotional moment where a little girl sees Miley take her wig off. It's like a sad moment, why? People take off wigs, like why are you so sad about this? Also, where are your parents? Why are you roaming around this town alone? People wear wigs! Then the hot guy finds out that Miley's Hannah and he's super mad. Miley's like, oh no, the hot guy doesn't like me. And it's like, boo, who cares? Just go back to LA and date Johnny Depp. Like you don't need this farm guy. Plagiarize him, make a hit and get the out. That's my advice for Miley Cyrus in this movie. Also, it's really sad because after the hot guy finds out that Miley's Hannah Montana, he asks her for half a million dollars. He's like, now that I know you're rich, like, can you fund my life? 
That doesn't happen, but I bet it did in a deleted scene. So now we're in the part of the movie where Hannah Montana does her charity concert to raise money to hire a hitman to kill that rich white guy from before. It's lit! Everyone's having fun, joints are being passed around the audience from preteen to preteen. It's all going good and fine until Hannah Montana has a Trisha Paytas kitchen floor breakdown. We're now getting into the most confusing part of the movie, where she reveals herself as Miley Cyrus to the audience. She takes off the Party City wig. And everyone's like, what? <gasps> oh my God. Now I finally see it. You guys do look exactly the same, just with a different color of hair. Nobody I've ever known in my life has ever dyed their hair a different color. So I didn't realize this was a thing that can happen. The reason why she reveals herself as Miley is because she feels bad for lying to the hot farm guy. Like boo, don't risk your entire international pop career for this guy. Like sure he's kind of cute, but so so is Cole Sprouse. Date him instead. He'll understand. So then she sings The Climb, which is a bop. Uh, yeah, she sings the song she plagiarized from the hot guy and everyone loves it. And then the little homeless orphan from before tells Miley to put the wig back on. Please be Hannah. We'll keep your secret. Put the wig back on. You'll never have a normal life if you don't. Hannah's a part of you. Don't let her go. Then she puts the wig back on, and that's that. Like, no one leaked it. Like, come on, bitch. At least one person in that audience of thousands of people would have taken a video, sent it to TMZ, taken the money, and ran. But not in this town. They're all good people here, and they all collectively agree, yes, we'll keep your secret. I won't send this information to Just Jared for a fee. No, I'll keep it a secret, because I'm a good person. Boo boo, come on. Someone would have posted that to their Insta story. It would be everywhere. Trending topic. Even even the creepy gossip columnist guy who's been following her around is like, you know what, I'm not gonna tell the world this story. You're not gonna destroy the dreams, are you? Because that's what Hannah's all about. Is that your story? No. That's not my story. Like what? I've told my mother secrets. And by the end of the day, my whole family knows. And you're telling me the scummy gossip columnist and the 5,000 people in the audience are keeping it a secret? It would have been a more realistic ending if Hannah Montana's big record label, like all of the executives from her record label, came to this small town and poisoned the whole crowd to keep the secret. Like they would have been like, listen, like Hannah Montana's our biggest seller. We can't have the secret get out. So we're gonna have to spike the corn dogs at this charity concert to kill this entire town to keep our pop star afloat. Like that would have been more realistic. That should have been an alternate ending. Whatever, it's just a movie. It's not a big deal. I'm pissed. This was an important video. I felt like it needed to be talked about. You guys agree? <laughs> All right, thank you guys for coming along on this sexual journey featuring Billy Ray Cyrus's hot scamming face. Let's all start a GoFundMe to fund a new Hannah Montana movie where I play Billy Ray Cyrus's hot as f sugar baby. That would be a great movie. Don't forget to subscribe, click that notification bell, comment below on a scale from one to 10 how bangable you think Billy Ray Cyrus is, and I'm gonna go on my merry way. Bye, bitch.